1970s, our vaccines were kind of crude. We had a DPT vaccine that was a whole cell vaccine. We had flu vaccine, a swine flu, it was a whole cell vaccine. They were crude vaccines, there were a tremendous amount of concern about side effects. The DPT, there was a significant risk of getting crying spells, convulsions. Some kids who were neurologically impaired could end up with encephalitis. Doctors were afraid to give it to a lot of kids that had any questionable developmental concerns. The new DPT is a cellular vaccine I don't even get calls at night for any crying. The flu vaccine, as you brought up many times, it's made against the hereditary's little component. It's really targeting to make an antibody with no aggravation. Is that true? That is entirely true. Vaccine technology is far better than it was 30 years ago when the first swine flu vaccine was mass produced in a rapid fashion and led to some, con some concerns about side effects, specifically the concern of neurologic problems in those patients. It has been questioned whether that vaccine actually did lead to those neurologic problems, but regardless, the production of vaccine now is far better and far more precise than the process to produce vaccine that existed more than 30 years ago. We now have a much more purified end product of just hemagglutinin, which leads to the antibody response, which allows for patients to be protected from influenza infection. This decreases significantly any potential contaminants which have been imputed to be responsible for some of the side effects that have occurred. I think what underscores this is the fact that at this point, more than 20 million H1N1 vaccines have been administered in the United States alone without a single report of a serious side effect occurring. These data is analyzed by an independent panel on a weekly basis and with all side effects being looked for, not just by report, but by physician visit and by other analysis of data to try to find whether even a small risk of side effect occurs. At this point, no significant side effects have been identified after 20 million vaccines are distributed. Well, if we have an outbreak of a mutated flu in the past, it doesn't have 36,000 deaths. Those usually have 100,000 deaths or more. Is that true? It's true that the, that the concern that exists is that the next shifting of the influenza virus will lead to an even more dangerous form of influenza and that this type of shift will lead to a second global pandemic similar to the pandemic of 1918 where millions of people died worldwide from influenza infection. If it doesn't even do that, and we have 100,000 deaths, it seems that 10% of the deaths are children. We could, if we don't vaccinate, be talking about 10,000 deaths to children. If it mutates, it could be three or four times that. Is that true? This is, that is entirely true. In fact, there have been influenza viruses where children become a greater target for more severe infection, and the 10% number may even be an underestimate for the number of pediatric deaths relative to adult deaths in that population. And I'll make one last point. I'd rather be wrong and vaccinate all the kids and say nothing happened than be right and we have a bunch of kids that have died. I want to be wrong. I don't want to be right. I want no deaths. We both agree? I, I totally agree. I think the risk of vaccination is so tiny and the risk of influenza is so great that those odds just weigh vaccination, weigh in favor of vaccination at a tremendous, uh, as a tremendous benefit. Thank you so much. You're very welcome.